Crown 5, man. We're in the basement of NYU somewhere, man, with Drizzy <laughs> Drake, man. The Don, what's up, Drake? Feel good, man. <laughs> I, I reached out to you, man, about doing this Crown thing, you know, with live audience. Everybody's excited. It's actually you know, not bro. true. Uh -oh. I reached out to you about doing the Crown thing. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. there are there, there is this things that you have to say. And a lot of the times when I get interviewed, I don't get to say those things. I'm sure you have some controversial questions that I'm like 150%, you know, like ready to answer tonight. Drizzy Drake. This is beautiful, man. Look at this. What's up? What's up, mom, right there? I see you, mom. What's up? That's not my mom, but it's somebody's mom right there. What's going on? What's up? Everybody from New York, shout out to New York, love. I don't even want to sit down. I feel like I should start performing yeah, or some yeah. shit. Yeah. We ain't paying pay for that, but <laughs> you want to do that. That's great. This is beautiful, man. Thank you for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. You can give that out. Let's give that out to some people in the crowd. Let's get some drinks. Yeah, pop that and don't. Oh, you want to let me do it? So I. Yo, you champagne, you right, champagne, okay. poppy, baby. All right. Yeah. Take a shot for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Giving that to. I'm gonna see. give it to this mom right here. Mom, you drink? Oh, shit. You drink? Yeah, come on, get some of that, baby. Yeah. You and them older ladies, man. <laughs> I thought it was nothing was the same. That's kind of the same, man. You and the, <laughs> you and the older ladies, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, that was that's how it's supposed to be. She needs a little champagne to get things right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go straight to the hey, listen, mom, it's gonna be a long night. I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> There's a lot of women in the crowd. Thank God. Look at that. I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie to you, Drake. This is the most women at a crown so far. Yeah, thank you. That's great. <laughs> I'm on it. It's not me, but <laughs> <laughs> now, but speaking of like things that take a long time, man, you really took your time putting this putting this album together, man. Yeah. Hey, can I do my job? Hey, hey, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get there. Be patient. <laughs> Nah, but it, it was a process with this third album, uh, Nothing Was The Same, you know? And, uh, you know, you put started out in February and that took off. Like, talk to me about how you was like, how you rolled out this year and then still maintain your patience of making sure you piece together this project the way you wanted it. And before you, you told people just wait on it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. till, it was, <laughs> till it was right, you know? Well, how um, were you able to maintain that and, and roll out this year in a way? I think 40 was like a big, um, was a big, Factor in that. Yeah. Oh, four, 40 is here, yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, just yeah. save that. 40 you know, is here. <laughs> um, but 40, 40. 40 challenged me um, for the first time. You know, a lot of our projects have been like um, 17 songs, 18 songs, a collection of music that um, I never feel like it's enough. So what I do is I overcompensate. I do as much as I can. I try and include as much as I can. And for the first time, he challenged me to make like a concise project and he was you know actually challenged me to hold it to 13 songs which um because you know he is not only my friend and not only my partner but he's also a mentor to me i accepted the challenge so what happened was i was trying to make a body of work that from front to back was a complex body of work but an easy listen that made you like it's such a i wanted it to be such a journey that you know once it's over you're like man i can't it, like i gotta listen again you know and some of the greatest projects some of my favorite albums are like that so um i really tried to make you know a piece that wasn't wasn't too much music to the point where you have to pick out your favorites i just wanted it to flow from front to back and in order to do that it took me a lot of time just as far as transitions as far as you know um making sure the songs made sense. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't tell my story using like, um, like, you know, sometimes people will tell stories using like interludes or skits or stuff like that. I tried to tell the story like with the music. So to do that, it, it took me about like a year and it's been like two years since Take Care almost, which is crazy, but it, it took me a while, so. And was it, did you feel like with Take Care, I mean, I know what you did your first album, um, I know you had certain things that you felt like didn't go the way you wanted to go with that. And then I feel like with Take Care, you nailed it the way you wanted, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> take a shot. Now, take care. I felt like you nailed it, and it kind of lifted this weight off your shoulder, and it seemed like 
you just had this extra confidence, you know what I mean, going forward. Is that, is that fair to say? I wouldn't say necessarily that I nailed it on Take Care. I mean, I still... <laughs> Thank you. Well, but, you also say you are a perfectionist. You yeah, are a perfectionist. Me, me, and 40 are, me and 40 have our, our, our issues with Take Care as well. I mean, there's just moments where I feel like, you know, um, two songs could have been one great song, or, you know, um, arrangements could have been a little different. I do love that album, and it was a time in my life where um, that album told that story. And for this, for this, this album, I, I needed to tell a different story. I'm at a very different place in my life, you know. I, I, feel, um, I feel great with me, you know. This is the first time that I'm not searching for what I had in the past. Um, I'm not even waiting for what's to come in the future. I mean, I'm excited for it, but the present, the life that I'm living right now is the greatest thing I could ever ask for, and I wanted to make that album, so. Amazing. So how do, you, how do you feel that, how do you feel the album expresses that? Like, how, what is the story if people haven't really sat with it yet, like, that you feel you're really trying to convey? Well, I think that you, you can hear me reflecting on things, but not longing for them. I think this album, I may touch on those things, and I touch on those things for the sake of like the fact that, you know, I try and make like a life soundtrack. You know, people yeah. like, if I didn't write about my life, people may say about me like, oh man, you know, everything's so emotional. But like, if I didn't write about that, like what the fuck else would I write about? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, but I also feel like what people say about you is that out of all the artists in hip hop, you, you best reflect this, new, this generation. Yeah, I was at a barbershop and this dude was saying how like he loved uh, from you time. You don't go to the barbershop, <laughs> that's a lie. This guy gets like private haircuts with like warm <laughs> facial massages and shit like that. I'm at the barber shop. That was like the most hip hop thing you hood, could say. Not in the hood. I was at the barber. You you were at the salon. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they don't give yes. that. They don't give that cut at the barber shop. <laughs> and after my Manny Petty, my nigga pulled me to the side and he said, um, "Nah, the record from Time where uh, you talk about reconnecting to your father." Yeah. Um, he related to that. You know, a lot of brothers don't have a father coming up, so I feel like that's a great example of how. You know, you're rapping about your experience with, with, with Papa Graham and, and reconnecting with him, mm. and he found a connection to that. And like, he, could, he was also the type of cat that doesn't really, you know, you sing too much and all that type yeah. of the one on one type criticism that guy. for you, that kind of guy. <laughs> but even you, 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 you tuck his heartstrings with that shit, or you connect to him that way. Does that feel like, you, do you feel like that that's your strength that you're able to do that despite people's you well, know, biases it, against you? When maybe? it comes to somebody like that, you know, I'll never be that guy to him, you know, I'll never be the guy that's aggressive enough, I'll never be the guy that, you know, is rap or hip hop enough, so, and that's fine, you know, I accept that, I mean, like, you look at, look at this, like, I have enough love, I don't need everybody's love, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah, I get it, you know, um, yeah, definitely, and, um, <laughs> but, but, I, it does, it does, you know, it does make me, it does make me happy that even, even when there is somebody who, can say like, man, you know, like a lot of the feedback that I've gotten on this album is like, man, you know, I'm not a Drake fan, but I gotta say, there's some joints on here. <laughs> I, but that's what it's about, man. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that, that, that's evolution. That's converting. That's converting people's minds. And you know, I had the option after Take Care, because in a lot of people's eyes, it was like a victory. It was a, it was a huge win. Got a little Grammy. And I can, right. yeah, and I, and, yeah, thank you. How do you, like, I know you've had this thing about, you had to accept the fact, look, I, I sing well, I write melodies, I rap well, like, I'm just going to do both. That's my strength. I'm not going to hide from it. I'm not trying to please everybody. It feels like even with now, with nothing was the same, you found a more comfortable balance with that. Like, how did you achieve that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's something to be said for, I understand sort of when people start saying that when it's just straight up ballads and it's, and, and it's music that I'm in love with, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, you know. There's times where I feel like I like R&B music better than I like rap music. You know, it's just it's just it's just sometimes like I like I like listening to it, whether it be classic, whether it be new. You know, it's just when I find myself having free time, you know, I like melody. And it's so funny that people scrutinize me so much for melody because then another rapper will go and drop their single and the whole single is melody driven. And that's OK, because he's allowed to do that and I'm not allowed to do that. It's just like this crazy double standard that people have for me. Um, but with this album, what I tried to do is blur the lines between, like, say, you know, a song on the last album, like, Doing It Wrong, which was, like, straight, which was, like, straight melody, 
Um, and it was like straight ballad, you know, it was very slow. It was kind of drawn out. It was like, there was a sentiment to it or like a Marvin's Room, you know, which was like very like, you know, what I tried to do on this album and it's, 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 it's very much because my life isn't there. I tried to make even the R&B songs exciting to the point where it's like, man, this doesn't even feel like R&B. And it, it, what was crazy was when I have a song on the album called Connect. And um, yes. We like that song, we yeah. like that song. <laughs> and, um, Swang it. Yeah. <laughs> and I had, a, uh, I, had a, I had a sample at the beginning of it. And I had to bring this baseball announcer in to recut the sample for me. And um, he was like a guy that obviously, you know, is into like jazz and into all this other music and not really into rap. And he listened to the song and he was like, man, I don't even know what genre to classify this as. And to hear somebody like that say something like that, I was like, oh man, I'm on the right path. This is good, you know? And I want to blur the lines and I want to blend it because like I said, I embrace it at this point. Like, I, if you think I sing too much now, just wait till I'm like 33 and I do this straight. <laughs> <laughs> just wait till I'm like at, at the MGM Grand every night and you can come see me <laughs> with the suit and the super tan like on the keys, you know what I'm saying? Just like this. It'll be just, it'll look just like this. You'll all have drinks <laughs> and I'll be, <laughs> that's where it's going. But in the mean, but in the meantime, though, the aggressive side of you. I don't, I don't do the motto at that show either. It's just all, <laughs> all it's all the slow shit. Your bars are way more aggressive, man. You, you rapping with like a certain tenacity. Because I'm a good rapper, man. I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if you guys forgot recently, but you know, I rap. That's what but I why, do. How have you become a better rapper? You're a better rapper. Um, I. I don't know really how to answer that question. I, I just, I always want to outdo myself. Um, I always want to outdo everybody else around me. Um, I'm a very competitive person. I'm just quiet about it. I'm, I'm not really out there like talking about who I want to outdo. I'd rather just go and outdo it. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to just sitting back and being like, oh, I, you know, I don't need to tell you who I'm better than or who I'm trying to be better than. I just want to put my music out and then you tell me who's, who's better than, than, you know what I'm saying? That's, I mean, yeah. I, 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 leave it, I leave it up to the people, you know? Yeah. And, and um, as far as like, how do I, how do I get better? I, I push myself really hard. I mean, I have great opinions in the studio, you know, like me, myself. Hush, we all sit in the studio and, no, uh, sorry, me, myself, Hush, that makes no sense. Me, 40, me and Hush. hush. Um, <laughs> I, I need that drink whenever you guys are ready. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we all sit in the studio and I don't, I don't sacrifice like, oh, I try not to sacrifice any bar, you know? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there on, on the last two lines of a verse for three, four days if I need to, you know, just to figure out how to end it, you know, I want it to be cohesive. Um, I always want the beginning of a verse to be strong. I always want the end to be strong. And I really, really, really spend a lot of time on bars, man. You know, um, luckily for me, melodies come extremely easy, you know, knock on wood, like, but they, they do. I mean, I, 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 that is something that naturally, like, I just get in there and it starts flowing. And by, you know, 40 minutes in, an hour in, I have pretty much the direction that I'm going in. But when it comes to raps, I, I spend a lot of time on it, man. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, you know, that's all off the top, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like nah, I spend a lot of time. You spend a so, lot of time yeah. in the intro. That's yeah, I do. Leather. Yeah, I do. I do spend a Everybody lot of time loves on my that. intros. Talk about that record. Like, why, why, why do you think it was so important to kind of set, to set the tone of the album with that type of song and like, well, literally say that you're spending time with this and you yeah. just keep firing bars and bars and bars. Like, Th this album, I set out to have like one the most aggressive intro to date. You know, all my other intros, like if you talk about like Lust for Life, then um, then um, what was what was on Fireworks, then Over My Dead Body. They're all sort of like these, you know, lead-ins to you know the the when it comes to the production, they're um. They're like you know, sort of somber and 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 you know they they they're impactful, but they 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 weren't Tuscan leather. And I was I was in Atlanta with Forty, and I was like, man, just make me some Dipset Heatmaker shit, like so I could just really. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I really want to go off, and he made this beat, and I did the verse, and then like throughout the, I mean, we had it for a long time, and throughout the course of the album, the beat just kept evolving, and I would you know, take it somewhere else for the second verse, and then the third verse went somewhere else, and then Curtis Mayfield is on the end, and it was just like, 
it was an art piece. You know, it became it became an ex it, it became an album in itself. You know, it was like this this six minute self expression to let you know everything, all the questions that I don't normally answer because I don't like to go up, you know, to these radio stations and sit with these press people because at the end of the day, like I said backstage, the reason why I like talking to you is because I feel like you're really trying to bring answers to these people and not tear apart my character or nitpick at me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna be honest, like if I go up to the radio station and I don't, you know, I don't say some dumb shit about, you know, Chris Brown, or if I don't do some shit, like if I don't, if I don't do some wild shit, then they get no ratings. So, you know, it, it, it's tough to really participate in media otherwise, but you know, instead of going up there and just talking about it, I'd rather just talk about my life on the song. So that was really what that intro was about, you know, and I spent a long time on it, so. <laughs> How much time is the nigga spend on the intro? Let's talk about Wu-Tang Forever. Like, I think it was like a lot of, it's yours, AKA it's yours. You guess the thing, you could have you just called it, it's yours. Why did you call it Wu-Tang Forever? And were you surprised that people tried to make a, a little brouhaha, a little hoopla around it? Like, a little what? Like, a like, 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 like controversy, like you were disrespecting, Wu -Tang. you know, like it's not Wu-Tang or this. Man, not, I'm gonna tell you something. You know? I had the best moment in my life the other day. I was at rehearsal. One of the best moments. And like Ghostface Killer called me and he was like, uh, yeah. And he was like, yo, son, like, yo, it's this, you know. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna like, I don't wanna out his business, but he was just so real about it that I just gotta tell this story because I'm proud. So if he watches this and I'm sorry, but I gotta tell the story. He was like, uh, he was like, yo, son, like, you know, it's this guy on Twitter, man, and you know, he been pretending to be me for a long time and talk down on you, but yo, you know, like. <laughs> You're like, yeah, for real. And he was like, he was like, yo, like, I just wanted to tell you, like, you know, you're one of my favorite MCs. And to hear that from him, you know, somebody who, I mean, we all have looked up to for so long. And um, it, it, it meant a lot to me because I did take a risk by titling that song what, what, what it was. And I remember we had conversations about it initially, like, oh, is this going to be like, is it going to stunt the growth of the song or whatever? But um, for me, I, I'm, I'm always into paying homage. You know, last album, it was practice. Um, and this album, that's kind of what that's kind of what Wu Tang Forever is. I always kind of try to pick a a classic hip hop song and, and make it my own. You know, um, it, it reminds me of sort of the interlude series that I have, like the Bria's interlude. To see, it's kind of that thing. Like I'm, I sort of found a new groove with that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I, I was so I, I thought it would have been worse than that, really, to be honest. I mean, and and I have like a great uh, a great piece to bring to you guys too, which is just like me and like. Wu Tang Clan all rapping together again, which is dope. So, yeah, you told me about that. They might get that soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's coming soon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Definitely, it's on the way. The language. The language. Yep. I mean, that's 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 again very sharp on the bars. Very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was what was the inspiration behind that? Like, what made you feel like the, the, the statements behind that? Like, what what made that record fit? What right? statements are you referring to? <laughs> Wait, I got some here. I wrote them down. Well, uh, you, know, you do a great job, but when you talk, when you talk down, because like, I don't listen to your new shit, don't ask for my take on it. Your shit is not that inspiring. Yeah, I gotta kill off the weak shit that got y'all excited. Yep, I'm it's good. A at very, that, no? It's a very. <laughs> you doing that? Now? <laughs> you no, I mean like no. I'm saying like I I I I like to get like. What are you asking exactly? I don't understand. <laughs> well, no, it's the competition of hip hop. I mean, obviously, you know. When you make those kind of records and you're, and you're making those statements and, and you're competing, are you deferring to specific things or it's just about making the most boldest, strong statement that you can about your craft well, and where you stand? When I say something, I mean it. You know, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not just saying it to be like, this sounds cool. I'm gonna write this down. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, of course, I mean it. Like, it's just like, um, like I understand that people need something new to love. That is just natural human, like desire. You know, and when it comes, like, you know. It's, it's like the same way people um, be like, man, you know, uh, you got to get back on that so far gone shit. That was your, it's just like, what is that to you, though? Is it do I have to get back to sounding like that? Or was that a time marker in your life when you were in college dating this girl and you got that mixtape and nobody knew about Drake? And now, you know, and 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 you want and you want that moment back i can't give you that moment yeah. anymore i can keep giving you great music we can keep growing we can keep understanding each other but it's tough for me to go back there you know so um as far as like making those statements 
I don't know what I was saying about that. Uh, <laughs> the language, the language. Why well, no, the language feel right? You got stun on there too. Stun no, wait, hold on. Talk. I was making a point. Hold on, <laughs> Elliot. Give me a second. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, man. Fuck everybody, man. Shit. <laughs> Well, it I'm seems just... like if you talk about, like someone yelled out Kendrick, it seems like nowadays people want to build Kendrick. Nobody yelled out Kendrick. You just heard that in your head. <laughs> no, earlier. When you go to sleep, you just hear somebody be like, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> no, but here's what's funny about you and Kendrick Lamar. It's like people forget you had him on Take Care. You had him on Buried Alive. You talked about a meeting that you guys had where you kind of were schooling him on the game. And there's a great line about how he realized he's the same age as you, and he, it made him rude and impatient. So it's almost like it's very foreshadowing. You know, he ended up making a great record, Good Kid, Mad City. Just the a connection. Phenomenal you, album, by phenomenal the way. Album. Phenomenal album. Yeah, round of applause. And then now he takes a competitive stance with a verse like Control. And then you was, you said that you know he's not murdering you in any platform. But you know that's that's where that rivalry. That's where people want to try to build. <laughs> that's if you want to try to build a rivalry. Like, what's your, what's your take on that? Do you feel like that they're trying to, they're trying to create a competition that, that he's not on your level because of your accomplishments? Like, do you feel like they're trying to hype this up and elevate it too much? Nah, I, I feel like that, that's, that's it. It's like, you know, he's, an, he's the new guy to love. And of course, I mean, rightfully so. He's super talented, you know. But, thank you. But he's, he's, <laughs> but he's like, you know, he is the underdog that's extremely hungry, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and he's doing his thing really well. Um, and that verse was, he's giving people like moments, you know, like that, that verse was a, a moment to talk about. Um, are you listening to it now at this point in time? Uh, okay. And then, <laughs> but it was, it was real cool for like, you know, a couple weeks. But like, if I asked you, for example, like, how does that verse start? <laughs> no, do you remember? <laughs> no, and like, no, no, no. I, no, now mind you, it'll go on in complex and rap radar, give mm -hmm. it like verse of the millennium and all that shit or whatever. <laughs> but like, I'm just saying, it's like, you know, um, I remember like um, somebody like asking me, you know, or maybe it was you that was like, is Kendrick Lamar your biggest competition like in this generation or whatever? Yeah. And I think that Kendrick has like the utmost potential, man. Like, you know, I see Kendrick tomorrow, I'm gonna dap him. I didn't feel a way about that verse. I get it, I get the moment. Like, you know, he's a good guy. And, and, and like, I know that that verse had no malice behind it because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. So it's like, he didn't come on there on some wild, like, yeah, I'm in New York, fuck everybody, don't look at me. <laughs> I, like, I'm the king. So it, it was. You know, it was, it was one of those things, it's like, I almost wish he had come in there on that shit because I kind of lost like a little respect for the sentiment of the verse. If it's really fuck everybody, then it needs to be fuck everybody. It just can't be halfway for the sake of the people. But you know what I'm saying? Like, for real, that's just how I feel. Yeah. But, but anyway, like, you know, um, I, I still like, uh, when it comes to competition, I'm just, I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. I'm talking about hit records. I'm talking about, to, I'm, t I'm basically talking about like, you know, there's one guy who's s s up every night thinking about how to get better and how to do things bigger. And you know, that's Kanye West. He's like, the, you know, he's like, he's always, he's always gonna be, he's always gonna be the guy that's trying to outthink and outdo, you know, everybody. So for me, that, that would be like, you know, that's my, that's my guy that I aspire to surpass, you know what I mean? And, 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 and as far as Kendrick goes, like, I can't wait to see what he does because now it's time to show and prove. And, and, and consistency has is, is been one album. Consistency is like, you need more than one album, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's time to show and prove. And I look forward to seeing what he does, man. He's fucking super talented. So yeah, cheers to Kendrick Lamar. All right.